It's very rare that a web designer makes over $10,000 per month in profit. And if they do, it's never consistent. They might sign a couple projects in one month that are high ticket, but the problem is the next month they're back down to zero. It's a flawed business model. And that used to be me. And I used to suck. I got three clients my entire first year of trying this. My first client paid $150. My second client paid $400. I didn't know what I was doing. But if you fast forward a couple years, I've never made less than $10,000 per month since 2020. And I've achieved everything I've wanted because I adjusted my model. Imagine paying your mom a salary. Imagine traveling the world. Imagine working five to 10 hours per week on your business. Imagine living the life of your dreams, hanging around the people that you want to be around. And since I sold all my stuff and started traveling full time, I've met a whole bunch of other agency owners, web designers, and people that started off freelancing but then evolved their business that make even more than me. They were making over 100000 per month. And I didn't even know these people existed until I actually started meeting them and networking with them. And the principles that I'm going to share with you here today are what I've learned through my years of struggle in figuring stuff out and also stuff that I learned from them and I've applied to my business and I've scaled that even beyond that. Now, before we dive in, let me tell you a story. I remember having my first senior web design job. And mind you, to get this job, I had to handwrite code and handwrite websites to even get this interview. I got it, crushed the interview, and ended up getting the job, and I was there for one year. And I sat in this job, and there was just a team of web designers, really talented people all much older than me. I was in my early 20s when I landed this. I was the youngest person in that room. And I self-taught myself everything. And these guys were very talented. One guy in specific was crushing it. He could build websites with speed. They looked gorgeous. I mean, anything you could envision this guy could build. And I looked up to him. He was a bit of a mentor at the time. And I'll never forget when he texted me in 2020, when the virus happened. He lost his job, and he asked me for advice. He asked me about how I'm doing, what I'm working on. We were just catching up a little bit. And he sent me a text that I'll never forget. He said, well, at least you have work. And this was insane to me because he wasn't making money. He didn't have any projects coming in. He wasn't making any money, even though he was the most talented guy in the room. He got promoted. He was a manager by the time that I left. And everyone looked up to him. And here he is, struggling. And it taught me a powerful lesson. It taught me that if you want to be in this business, and you want to make money, that's a different skill than just being a good web designer. Those are two different things. If you're a good web designer, you can get a job, a nice comfortable job, if that's what you want. But I was tired of working in a cubicle, driving to work, sitting in traffic, being capped on my income. Chances are you got into web design to be free. Right, to express your artistic ability. Maybe it's to have location freedom. Maybe it's to work on your own business. Maybe it's to have time freedom, work when you want to work. Maybe it's to have an uncapped income. You wanted all these things, but now you might feel trapped. And why is that? It's because your business model is fundamentally broken. Now, I've outlined my business model before in other videos, but the biggest thing 
that freelancers and web designers don't understand is that business is about solving problems. If you want to make more money, you need recurring services. You can't be in this feast and famine mindset. Now, some web designers don't even think that business owners have the money to pay them. And this is a completely broken mindset. You can see these people in my comments sometimes. Oh, no business owner is going to pay $500 for a website. Okay, no problem. My higher end websites were anywhere from four to $6,000. These are just WordPress websites that we were building. And what I learned when I started making more money is that I need additional services to add on. Now before you get the objection of, oh, I don't want to learn Facebook ads or Google ads, or I don't want to learn these other services. I just want to stick to being a web designer. What a lot of people don't realize in the web design space is you don't have to learn all this stuff. You don't have to learn all these different skills. Why not just hire a contractor and pay him per month, per client, for every, cl for every person that you bring his way? So imagine you have a client that's a plumber in Las Vegas. You get him, he, he pays you a couple thousand dollars for a website. Instead of letting him go, you sit down and you tell him, hey, what else do you need? What else can I help you with? And he says he needs more business. Hey, I need more leads to my company. Most web designers just let him go completely. Okay, we've done your website. Here you go. The smart ones charge a monthly hosting fee. We were charging about $100 a month. But that's it. To get to $10,000 a month with $100 a month clients is going to take forever. But... You could do two things. You could have a referral partner to where you just send him to this partner and he gives you a monthly recurring referral fee, something like 20%. So if your partner charges 1000 a month, he can send you 200 a month just for referring that person. The other thing you can do, this is what I did, this is the much higher profit way of doing things, is to hire someone that's an expert. If they need more leads, find someone that does Google ads. Find someone that does Facebook ads specifically for his industry. It's not hard to do. If he's a plumber, you can go inside Facebook groups and find media buyers, people that run ads, and just search the word plumber. And you'll find people in this industry. Ask them what their rates are. Okay? You can white label these services. So we charge $1,500 per month for our advertising services. I don't run any ads. Now, even though I did learn the skill, even though I did used to run it myself, but even that, I don't know if it was worth it. I probably would have gotten to over $10,000 per month faster had I just outsourced it and focused all my time on getting clients. So you find this expert, you charge the client $1,500 per month, or if you're not comfortable with that, charge them $750 until you get some testimonials. Increase your prices to $1,000 per month, and then outsource it. Ask this media buyer how much they're going to charge. And they'll tell you. Mine was charging $250 per month per client. It's impossible for you to lose money. Client pays you $750, $1,000, they sign on, you onboard them, then you assign it to this contractor and pay him $250. It's a very simple business model. You don't have employees, you're still technically this freelancer. You don't have to manage people, you don't have a big team, but now you have a scalable business. How many clients do you need to get to 10000 a month? If you're charging 1000 then it's... 10 clients, surely it's not going to be all profit, but get a couple more, and then you'll be good. A lot of web designers have some kind of allergy towards recurring services. I don't see anyone else talking about this. They're stuck in this, I'm a web designer mindset versus being 
a business owner that actually solves problems. If you want to evolve, if you want to get the life of your dreams, you need to offer recurring services. Now, advertising is just one. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. There's plenty more. And we teach all of that on this channel. You can learn about them for free. But the big thing is about transitioning from freelancer into an agency, into a business owner, into a CEO, into someone that doesn't just work inside their business, but works on their business. And that's going to take some leveling up on your end. You're not just going to sit and design websites all day. Now, if that's what you want to do, you certainly can. But I suggest even outsourcing some of that process. If you want to be in full control of your design, that's great. But why not pay someone $5 an hour to set up the foundations of where you're going to be building this website? If you're using WordPress, have them install WordPress. Have them import the theme that you want. Set up the plugins that you want. Set up all of this stuff so all you have to do is come in and design the website. You don't have to do this $5 an hour work. You can do the high-end work. You can do what you're special in. You can focus on your specialty. Thing is, you don't need a big team for this. And you can set it up in a way to where you're not losing money. Pay people per hour. Pay people per performance. Now you're solving real problems. And sometimes it's not even about asking them, hey, what else do you want? You can sit down with them and diagnose their business. That's your job as the professional. If you have a plumber in Las Vegas and he has five freaking Google reviews, what do you think you should do? What we do on our demo calls is we pull up his business and we compare him to everyone else in his town. All these business owners are very competitive. Pull up his website, if he has one. Compare it to his top guy in his city. And you'll see how quick he'll be ready to spend money on a new website. Look at his reviews. Look at his competitors' reviews. Hey, Mr. Business Owner, ABC Plumbing, your competitor, has 57 Google reviews. And he's number one here in Las Vegas. You have five. Do you think if you had more reviews, your business would grow? Do you think it would show higher up on Google? Do you think it would build trust? Do you think people would want to work with you more? The answer is yes, obviously. And you can also convince them by asking him, look, if you were a random person, you didn't know you and you didn't know this business owner, who would you move forward with? Who would you end up hiring? Oh, well, I would hire this guy because he has more reviews, he's more trusted, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. So there's a lot of additional services that your clients need that you're not offering. And it's amazing to me that more people don't sit down and talk about this. By putting yourself in a box of, I'm just a web designer, that's all I want to focus on. It's selfish. It's stopping you from achieving the life that you want. It's stopping you from achieving all the things that you set out and that you told yourself you were going to get before you even got into web design. Maybe you need to sit back and reflect. Why did you even get into web design? What attracted you to this business model in the first place?